Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We worship you, Jesus.
Neither that corruption inherits the king. Neither that corruption inherits the kingdom of God. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, there shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our moderator for the service today is Brother Sylvan Walker. <laughs> This time I'm going to ask you to stand while we give thanks to the Lord. Um. Almighty <laughs> God, eternal Father, Chelsea. as we come before you this morning, O oh Lord, to celebrate life lived by our brother, we fully understand as human beings, O oh Lord, we are up to mourn and we are full of sorrow. But as you say, O oh Lord, you promise unto us that there will be a brighter day. And as long as we believe in your word, we should look forward to that day. But today, O oh Lord, we understand is you cry, cry remembering you are lost, but in a certain circumstance it's gained. Lord, strengthen those that are holding in the pain this morning. None of us are ever prepared for this day. But we fully understand that this day coming. And what we should do, O oh Lord, is prepare ourselves that when this day cometh, we are ready. Merciful Father, bless us as we go through these proceedings, as we ask these mercies in your holy name. And the church says, Amen. 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 program you see the order of service and at this time I'm going to ask you again to stand and we, as we sing the opening hymn praise to the Lord the Almighty praise God this time of that well known with us um, we can be glad anybody in the audience that knows it well your, your, your mother-in-law knows this song well Okay. Some of us remember going back to school, this was used to be one of the, the songs we sing in the morning before classes. Yes. Thank you. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of
on behalf of Ms. McClark's wife for our rendition to be done by Corinne Crow. Um. Baker to come forward with a second lesson 
Romans 8, 35, 37 to 39. Brianna Baker, granddaughter. us from the love of Christ. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the Lord, from the love of, of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We fully understand that if somebody does any form of item and it's not flown freely as we'd expect it, we must be reminded when we're in a situation like this. Not every time things flows as we would have liked them to. But we should understand and be comforting by whatever they do. At this time, I'd ask a family that I come to know very well and I'm never tired of hearing them sing. And that's the Elliot family. And they're going to do a rendition on behalf of Grace Molly's daughter, the Elliot's. Yeah. 
But we have to earn that space Amen. for us to be together again. Amen. That's right. The next item on the program is a daughter's reflection. Victoria Baker. A daughter's reflection of her father. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Daddy, as I reflect on your life, I know that being the center of attention like this wouldn't be your idea of fun. But it must be nice to know that everyone in and outside of this church is here because of the huge love and admiration they feel for you and, show, and to show their support for introducing your beloved wife, your four children, and our other relatives. You have always been quietly supporting and helping us all in the background with great affection and kind humor, and your passing has left a large gap that will never be filled, but will hopefully become less painful with time. Not to dwell on the cruel reality of the past 30 years that you lived as an amputee, but I can't help looking back at how gracefully you accepted your reality 
and never allowed the years of pain and discomfort to diminish the light that radiated from you to your family and a host of friends. Let's pause for a minute, however, to acknowledge and accept the fact that though Daddy was filled with laughter and was extremely, extremely witty, it didn't mean he wasn't a very strict disciplinarian and in our local jargon, a very miserable man. He was the old school type that never speared the rod and certainly he didn't spoil the child. Well, given the fact that I didn't live with him permanently while growing up, I had a grand escape plan to avoid that rod. Whenever the rod of correction was in play for another sibling, that was my cue to say goodbyes and head home to my mother's house just in case he felt overly generous and decided to share the rod with me too. I am sure looking back now, we can say that he did all this with love. My dad was no respecter of persons when he stood on the, on the position of principal, not even his own son. It was the source of much laughter, a situation that Troy shared with, with us siblings recently, when he told us of how daddy, of how he was fired by daddy. When daddy's sister, my dear little cartoon aunt Berdeen, was living in Canada, she asked daddy to see to the construction of a wall to the front of her home. There was no request for bids for the job to dig the foundation for the building of the, of the wall. And, through, and so through nepotism, Daddy awarded the job to his own son. To his own son, Troy, and a friend. But you know how workmen are. If a more lucrative opportunity presents itself, they will run for it. Well, Troy was no different. When he was asked to go make a quick and bigger money for a day, given his current contract with Daddy was for a longer period with no time constraints. Unfortunately, Troy left his position, his post, without informing Daddy to take up the short-term opportunity. I believe it or not, when Troy got home, he was told in no uncertain terms, and I quote, don't put your foot back over him. You are fired. <laughs> yup, that was principal, that was a principal sign, regardless of the person. Daddy was that man who sat on his veranda and waved to everyone passing by, even when many did not see him waving. Daddy was that man who talked and shouted as loudly as he laughed. Miss Belma, Miss Imo, and the rest of Bacawal could hear Daddy calling for Neely or Troy when they were there playing. No telephone required, as his voice was as powerful as his stature. Today, I can recall my dad with pride and joy as I reflect on a man who never looked for praise. He was never one to boast. He just went on quietly, doing his best for the ones he loved the most, his family and friends. I'm sure that he wouldn't want this gathering to be one filled with sadness and tears. As a matter of fact, I believe he was, if he was able to speak to us today, he would say, please, nobody would be crying because this is the first time he's talking to me. <laughs> that was a running joke he had, as whenever he called me or we would have a conversation in person about someone's passing in the community, he would always say, can you believe it? This is the first time it's ever happened to them. <laughs> yes, he was that dad who tried to make light of most things. He ensured my community, community connections were, net, were kept intact. He was that my community notice board as he kept me abreast of all happenings of the community, whether in person or via, the tele via telephone call. He was also my weather buddy. I can still hear his voice on the phone. Send me some of, some of the rain my way and stuff because I could see a lovely rain set down your way. In other conversations about rain, I would ask, so how was the rain for today for you, Daddy? His usual sarcastic response, as when we could usually have long periods of literal no rainfall. Yes, man, it rains so heavily, I get the sardine can't fall. <laughs> Today, I stand tall and recall. A dad who was serious enough to return a, a phot photograph sent to him in England because in the photos, it appeared as if one of my legs was shorter than the other. And he, in his words, he never leave no tongue to pick me at Jamaica. So this is not his daughter, so please send him a proper picture. 
A dad who worried a lot about his children. He threatened to beat me once because my mother sent me to school when it was ready. Imagine that. This was because he was worried for my safe return from school as I was attending Monroe Prep in Potsdam at the time, which was some distance away. But those of you who knew my mother, rest her soul, knows that unless you are dying, you go to school, rain or shine. He was that dad who loved deeply, especially his grandchildren, part of his show of love, was always to ensure he had something to give them on each visit. A dad who sparked my love for the game of cricket and with whom I shared many high and low points of the game, especially with West Indies team. A dad who had passion for a card game of PD, don't ask me anything about the game, but it must have been good as he would travel to various places to play with his friends, especially on Sundays. Some of those friends predeceased him, but I know it will be a grand reunion around that PD table. A dad who loved, who had a love for fruits, especially these berries and sarapos, and a deep love for grains, especially Google peas. A dad who loved pets, he always had dogs or cats. He at one point had lots of goats that he would rear for sale, but would never butcher for the traditional curry goat meal at Christmas. He would buy his money from elsewhere as he couldn't eat from the goats he had. I refuse to dwell on it, but will not forget the dad who lost his short-term memory in recent times, but never lost his sense of humor. I know I speak for my siblings, Grace, Anil, and Troy, when I say we choose not to be overly sad today because we showed to, we showed love to, and received love from Daddy, and have much to reflect on as we recall a generous, loving, and humorous father, father-in-law, grandfather, and great-grandfather, who was a friend to many, both young and old, but most of all, a devoted husband of over 45 years, to a loving wife who would be grateful for the memories of a long and happy union. Sleep well, Daddy, as we love, as we live, love, and laugh, just as hard as you taught us through the life that you live. And yes, Daddy, I will continue to support West Indies team, even when they are unable to qualify for the Super 12 stage and have been eliminated from the 2022 T20 World Cup. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I know that's crazy, but we are loyal fans. Mm -hmm. I love you, Paul Head, my dear, dear dad. A true reflection from my daughter as it relates to her dad. But if I, for convenience, make a change here, I notice on the program, it says Trevor Ballhead Ishman Clark. But based on what I just heard, I'm gonna change it just for the moment to Trevor No Nonsense Clark. <laughs> At this time, I'm gonna ask his grandchildren to come forward with an item. He's gone. Good morning. We can shed tears that Grandma Trevor is gone. Uh, we can smile because he has lived. <laughs> we can close our eyes and pray that Grandma will come back. Or we can open our eyes and see all that he has left. Our heart can be empty, but we can see him. Or we can be full of love that he has shared. We can turn our back on tomorrow and leave yesterday. Or we can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday we shared with him. We can remember Grandpa and all that he is gone, or we can cherish his memory and let it live on. We can cry and close our minds, be empty and turn our backs, or we can do what Grandpa Trevor would want, smile, open our eyes, love, and go on. Rest in eternal peace.
He's from Bashava. From her grandchildren, Sashiana, Shana, Shanaya, Tashika, Rihanna, Ojne, Justina, and Ode. And your great granddaughters, Chelsea and Anna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, there's a saying, and I used to wonder why it was being said. But when I became a grandfather myself, then I fully understood it. And it says, if I know grandchildren are so much fun, I'd have them first. <laughs> And I come to that realization. And it's meaning that we have a lot of time to spare. His daughter didn't have that luxury. She got the rod that he didn't spare. Or at least she almost got the rod he didn't spare. But with his grandkids, it's a different emotion that they experience because their granddad had a lot of love and a lot of time for them. Thank you very much. The next to be on the program is entitled A Dear Uncle. this on behalf of Nanette and Neville, who is in England, and they, as much as they wanted to be here, they were not able to make it. It is with a great sense of mixed feelings that we are celebrating the life of our dear Uncle Trevor. According to the scripture in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 2, is it, there is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to reap. Our Trevor has planted love and compassion that today we really have to celebrate his life as keeping that love and compassion he has planted. We have enjoyed the legacy of his culinary skills he displayed at home, utilizing native foods like sweet soup to make sumptuous meals. It has even reached the stage where he would boil sweet soup and ship it off to England for us. There was nothing, nothing to compare to his delicious taste. Uncle Trevor was a tower of strength and a key protector of our safety, and this has helped to shape us into the adults we are today. He will be greatly missed, but not forgotten, as the memories will still be with us. God knows best as he rests in Jesus from Renet and Neville. Peace and nephew. Thank you, thank you. At this time, we're going to sing our offertory hymn when we all. Get to heaven. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. Sing the wonders of Jesus in his mercy and his grace.
Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Jesus.
Father, be with us all. And we have come to that part where we have retreated to the sermon. And the song we just heard is a precursor to what is coming. You can call it the appetizer. And at this time, I have great pleasure to call upon my pastor, our pastor, Pastor Veronica James Hartman, to bring you God's word. Right. Thank you, Brother Walker. Can we raise our hand and give the Lord a praise? Can somebody shout at church family we want to express condolences to the bereaved family today as a matter of fact I'm related to the family I came in contact with <laughs> Master Trevor as I called him many many years ago when he came back from England and he met his beautiful wife it so happened that my sister and I, 45 years ago, we got married, were the bridesmaids at his wedding. So that's a long, long time ago. Um, you know, I found him to be such an awesome individual, very friendly, although firm as we said, but very friendly. Um, but one other thing I want to say about him, Corinne and Corinne and I used to go visiting on a number of occasions in that area and we visited him on many, many occasions and shared the word of the Lord with him. Just recently, just recently, I visited him twice because he wanted to be baptized but it did not materialize. But I want to say today that he had the opportunity to make that commitment to the Lord because he was given the word. Amen. So today is celebrating his life. But the word that I share today, it's not for him anymore. But it's for those of us who are in the hearing of my voice. Spirit of God, I thank you that you're here today. Lord, I thank you that you change it not. You are the same. Yesterday, Today and forever. Hallelujah to the Lord of God. We thank you that your presence is here in our midst, Lord. We can feel your presence. Although we mourn, Lord, we thank you that you're here to, to bring comfort. You're here to sustain us. You're here to, to lift us, mighty God. I pray that as I share your words, Lord, nothing of me will be seen, nothing of self will be spoken. But I pray that the grace of God, the Holy Spirit will breathe upon the word as I share it today, Lord, may some soul be convicted and be converted today, Lord. Because God will not know in you as our Lord and as our Savior we are lost. Father, we are in life and we have an opportunity to make this decision on this side. Thank you. Thank you. I can feel the presence of the Lord. I can feel the presence of the Lord. I believe in our funeral service. Bible. Amen. 
I want you to know that this book is real. It's even real than us sitting here today. The book is real. Glory to God. And the question is, which side of the door are you on? Are you on the inside? Or are you on the outside? That's a question. Those are two questions that you have to answer for yourself. Because the side of the door that you are on and I am on will determine where we spend our eternity. I bring you to the book of Matthew chapter 25 and we know that story well. It's called the story of the ten virgins. The Bible says that they were all virgins, ten of them, and they all had their lamps. And all of them had oil in their vessel. And the word of God says that the bridegroom who they were going out to meet delayed somewhat. And in the period of being delayed, five of the virgins became careless. I believe today that we are living in a society where our people are becoming careless with their soul. Today, I believe today that the sins of this world could be more. 
much greater, it should be much greater than the time of Noah. So you can imagine how the stench of this world is reaching the nostril of God. And the Bible says that God told Noah, Noah go and prepare an ark for the saving of the people. Let me tell you something. The word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever, not some people, but whosoever believe in him should not.
of person. I lose my niece at six from cancer. My grandmother died at 98, but they still die. But at a different stage in their life, God has given man the choice to decide your destiny. God has given you the choice to be on the inside of the door or on the outside. People are playing in God. God is wicked. Why God will do this? Why God will allow this? Why God will punish his people? God is not punishing us. Fall on me, let the rocks fall on me, 
all of the new things are here in my community. Oh God Almighty, it's frightening. The people in my community are saying, when I die, I can live in a house. My God, because when I die, I just die. <laughs> James. They call it 14 days and 7 days. So they live for 14 days. And they live for 7 days. So they just live it up. Live it up for the 7 days or the 14 days and anything happen, happen. If they die, they die. It doesn't matter because they are living it up for 14 or 7 days. But let me tell your friends if that was the end of it, let me tell you something we would have nothing to worry about. Can I tell my people if that was the end of it? And I say, my pastor, you just have preach where you believe. If you think this Bible is not real, it is real. Mighty God. When John, when, 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 when um, one of the prophets, I want to show you something before I finish up, because I'm going to finish up. When one of the prophets speaks of, of seeing, of seeing uh, things in the air that, that looks like locusts flying. My God, in those days they had nothing, nay, technology. But in those days they saw the airplanes uh, that we are flying in today. The Bible said, John the Revelator, and this is hundreds of years ago, he said that when Jesus returned, he said, and Moses will be killed in the city of Jerusalem. They didn't have any radio. They had nothing but the camel. And elephants were what? They traveled out in those days. And John said that the whole world shall see them in the streets. Tell me the whole world see because of technology today. And where you are, as a matter of fact, there are people abroad. to be in the 
Lord. Let me tell the family and friends, it is time to see the Lord. I hear Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Where do you stand today? Take a second and think. Are you on the inside? Or are you on the outside? And sometimes we are all friends. We want to come, but we lose friends to keep us out. And you know a lot of time what happened? We are all friends and, and relationships to keep us out. And guess what? A lot of time we stay out. And when we die, mighty God, they get see you. They prevent you from coming into God's kingdom. You are ashamed to serve God because of your friends. And when you die, they come to know the Lord. The question is, where do you stand today, family and friends? Which side of the door are you on? The word of God says, choose ye this day who you will serve. If God be God, serve him. I don't know why you have an impression that a Christian life is so ugly. 50 years almost. All my life. And I'll never change it for nothing. There's nothing that the world could offer me for me to change it for the world. And I think I'm smart enough to know when something is good. I believe I'm smart enough. I am not saying it's a bit of roses, but the hope that is in God. Hallelujah. The security that is in God. Hallelujah. Guess what? I'm a pilgrim and I'm a stranger. My house might be built of concrete, but I told somebody said, it's out of concrete, but I live in tent. Hallelujah to the love of God. Because when my name is called, hallelujah, I should be able to put up. Glory to God, I go to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How about you today? Can you bow your head with me? Which side of the door are you on? Are you on the inside? Or are you on the outside? It's a decision you must make. You can switch. I wonder if you know that people switch. Some people are on the inside and they switch for the pleasures of the world. And some are on the outside and they switch in. Those of you who are on the inside, stay in. Because any day now, Jesus can come. Those that are on the outside, it's time to come home. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, I've wandered far away from God. Now, come on, he loves you. Now I'm coming home. It doesn't matter what you have done. He loves you. And his arms are all twice stretched to you. Saying, come. Come home, my child. Can we bore him? You are here today. And you're really, you're serious. Really serious about wanting to make Jesus the Lord of your life. What a beautiful day to make this decision. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right where you are. Is there one? I've seen that hand. Is there another hand? Just push it up quickly because I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Yes, I've seen that hand. And the Lord. We're not going to delay, friend. We're not going to delay. Is there one more? Hallelujah. I've seen that hand. Thank you, Father. Is there one more? Yes, I've seen that hand. I've seen those hands. Yes, I've seen that hand in the passage. Is there anyone else? I've seen the hand. Amen. I've seen those hands. Let's take it serious. I've seen those hands on the outside there. Yes. I've seen those hands. And I want you to know that God sees them too. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day to give your life to the Lord. The word of God 
sins. That if you will confess your sins, then God is faithful and just to forgive you of them. Let me tell you something before I pray. It doesn't matter what you have done in life. A sin, when you come to Jesus, he gives you a clean page. It doesn't matter what people say about you, that you were this and, and you were that. When you come to Jesus, the word of God says that he cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness, never to judge you anymore. As I pray for you today, I want you to pray. Tell the Lord you're sorry for his sins. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to be the Lord of your life. That's a requirement. It doesn't matter how good you are, you have to do that. Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you even in this moment. Hallelujah. Your spirit is speaking. I thank you that even in this moment, hearts are being convicted. I pray, Lord, as they raise their hands today, even those who want to raise it, but they are so fearful. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of the Lord God will bring deep conviction. And Lord, they will surrender their life to you. I break every shackles over their life today in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance, oh God, from the shackles of sin in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that today will be a turning point in your life. Lord, we share your words today. May your spirit breathe on it. Even when they go home, may your word, Lord, stir in their hearts and, and in their spirit. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You have heard the word. Let me assure you that the word was not for Trevor. The word was for you and I. And what the pastor just did, she didn't make a statement or she didn't execute an accusation. She simply asked a question. What side? Are you on? And when you look at your program, as we always do, we see one sunrise and one sunset. How many programs have you handled that you have seen the sunrise and the sunset of another? We have privilege in this very room, all of us to know what our sunrise is. But guess what? We don't know what our sunset will be. But you have a golden opportunity that you are in the house of the Lord at this moment. And prior to your sunset, you can make it right with you. Are you ready to make it right with him prior to your sunset? What side are you on? And I let you ponder that. You know the side you're on. I know the side I'm on. But who am I to determine your side? You and you alone can do it. At this time, I'm going to ask O'Neill Clark's son to come forward with the eulogy. Thank you. If that was 
much I want to. The guy who was standing here today, I saw his family and dear friends. It's so sad. He would say, Oh, life of mackerel, fresher in bully beef and some sardine. Why you look like that? And see when I laugh, and I say, but kiss all the dandy chose his football come. They never know what's going on with laugh. Daddy never liked to see anyone being sad, and would always find a way to lift one's spirit. On behalf of mommy, my siblings, and other members of our family, we extend our gratitude to those present here today, and also to those watching the live stream on YouTube. Good afternoon. My name is O'Neill Clark, and I'm the third of four children for Mr. Trevor Ishman Clark, the man whose life we have gathered here to celebrate today. Trevor Ishman Clark, affectionately called Ballhead by most, was sent behind the crease to bat right here in Treasure Beach on Tuesday the 14th of December 1937 by Alva and Almina Clark. And I swear Grandpa Alva gave him the name Ballhead right then. Then Nina, you know me, if you tell me, say, this boy a bar, we know here, my feet head. Oh, you know it looks so bad. Or as long as I can remember, that was the one hairstyle that they had. Can't recall seeing it more here. As a young boy growing up, Dad, along with his brothers, Willie, Percy, Enos, Gerald, Orani, and Garth, would often take the cows to and from a place called New Savannah before and after school. A place I initially thought was located as far as Black River based on distance which I, had, which I was told they had to walk. While his sisters, Lita, Rosita, and Verdine, learned to be young women helping around the yard. They all learned at a tender age how to be responsible individuals. Education standards was pretty basic back then. Sandibank Basic and Primary Schools were the only institutions where learning to read and write existed within the community and the basics at that time were considered to be sufficient for day-to-day -day living. During those days, community tourism was non-existent, and making a shilling was never easy, and only achieved through hard labor, farming, rearing livestock, or becoming a fisherman. Those were the few choices available at the time. Daddy was an avid fisherman, but he also had the gift of a green thumb, this led him to till the soil and do some farming. But he had dreams of spreading his wings elsewhere and was not afraid to try new things. In 1959, at the age of 21, Master Trevor first traveled to the United Kingdom, more specifically England, to forge his own path on the journey called Life, where he worked as a machinist for a company called Brisco. It wasn't until 1975 that Mars Trevor decided that he had enough of England and wanted to return home for good. <laughs> that same year, while having a drink with a few friends, someone said to him, Then, Marlon, it's up to you now, Bassman, that at your age, you're not going to get no yet. Who would have been so get one? Something wrong with the rest? I'm going to laugh at that idea. I think that it offense to what was said and was destined to prove a point. Within a year after that statement, which was very shameful, Victoria and Gracie were born. And Master Trevor was elated. He loved children, and getting a few of his own made him happy and proud. The same friends that were laughing at him then now had some catching up to do. In 1976, Ballhead met a beautiful young lady by the name of Vince Evans from Flagerman. I think that time Grandpa, Ella, Grandpa Alva sent him for some melons, but instead he found the love of his life. Eight months later, they got married. In 1977, yours truly was born, and Mom persuaded Dad to return to England for the betterment of the family, which he actually did. It didn't take long for him to find employment at a train manufacturing plant in Birmingham called Metro Camel Limited and felt comfortable enough to send tickets and reunite his family. Talk about being a wonderful husband, eh? 
It was during one of his daily routines at work that a shipment of train parts arrived and needed to be offloaded by using the necessary equipment to do so. The guy that was, on a, the guy that was authorized to use such equipment was notably absent from work that day, and it was then that Master realized that an opportunity arose to impress his boss. He took charge and managed to safely upload the shipment, much to the anger, but also to the delight of his boss. You guessed it, Baldwin was promoted for using his initiative, but was sternly warned against using unauthorized equipment in the future. Regardless of the warning, his promotion allowed him to earn better wages. Life in England was good. His wife had a job at Cadbury's, a world-renowned chocolate company, and his children back home were being taken care of. Talk about being a good father, eh? In the 1980s, Metro Canada Limited began a restructuring exercise that saw them shift focus from manufacturing to doing final assembly only. This radical change caused the workforce to be reduced by 80% in 1984. Unfortunately, that was in that majority percentile. Unable to find a suitable job, Mass Trevor and Miss Vincy agreed that in 1985, they would follow the advice of a lab chain and head home sweet home. This is where they established themselves in a successful bar and grocery business. As they settled home, the union of husband and wife bore one more fruit, and little baby Matthew, also known as Troy, was born in 1986. The following year, Mass Trevor made 50 not out and was still on form. It was in November 1992 that tragedy struck. struck. Ballhead was on, was on his way home from Black Rock when the car he was traveling in met into an accident after which he was hospitalized with a badly broken leg. While in hospital, he started feeling excruciating pain shooting throughout his broken leg. Upon examination by the doctors, it was discovered that his leg had a major infection and he was diagnosed with life threatening gas can green. After all was being given out, we immediately went for the review from the third umpire. Amputation of his leg was the only way to save his life, and the third umpire said, not out. Miles Trevor remained at the wicket at 54. Miles Trevor continued to enjoy life with much love and support from his family and friends alike from yard and abroad. He lived life to the fullest and wasn't afraid to show the world who he really was. Good or bad, you can guarantee, you can be guaranteed that you will hear the truth, whether you like it or not. Some of his favorite activities revolved around spending time with family and friends, listening to old hits, and watching cricket. One time I heard him say, Kiss thought we love each other's football. What a shot! Six runs. To this day, I don't know how he saw that shot listening to the match on the radio. But, but it was indeed a great shot of watching it on sport news later that night. <clears throat> the wonderful thing about Mass Trevor was that he didn't just live for himself. Helping others and grinding the lives of those around him brought much joy to his own well-being. He was always willing to help and encourage others whenever he can. When asked one day by his wife why his eyes looked extra blue today, he responded, for a man in the hell on the sky. Or, when Matthew asked him, Daddy, when you want to do the thing for you, today or tomorrow? Daddy said, tomorrow. Matthew asked him, why not today? Daddy, Daddy immediately reported, why not tomorrow? His comebacks were legendary. His jokes always lived in the room. His kindness gave hope. His thoughtfulness was infectious. And he still managed to be all that and also to be a no-nonsense person. A man of principle, integrity, loyalty, he was a family man, and his love for his wife and children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren was endless. In closing, I want to thank you all once again for being with, us, being with us here today as we prepare to say goodbye to the man affectionately called Godhead. All of the support, encouragement, and words of comfort over the past several days will always be remembered. We thank you. Mr. Trevor Ishman Clark, 
was given a standing ovation as he left the crease on Tuesday, the 27th of September, 2022. He made 84 runs. Well batted, sir. Well batted. We shall pay for the West Indies. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And you all wish you had a son like this. But you never know when he's at your eulogy because you won't hear him. But we wish that we all had a son that can appreciate us the way we appreciate you then. And we thank you. At this time, I'm going to call upon Deacon Ricardo God to pray for our bereaved family. incident and go to school and he told me the story over and over again and they had a lot of history to go back and say but he lived a life and he has set an example. I will ask the rest of the church and the family member can remain seated and I'll ask the rest of the church to stand while we pray for the family at this time. Hallelujah. The rest of the congregation can stand please. The family member, please, can us their seat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, we honor you this morning. We thank you for life that have given and life that have made sense. Oh God, hallelujah. You say in your word that you have shined forth your light and the light have come but the darkness could not comprehend your light. But Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you see who for a moment, by your grace, God, that you will cause your light to shine again in the darkness, yes. and that some darkness will be able to comprehend, uh, Lord, what you're saying. Father, we know that it is hard to lose a loved one. We know the pains and the agony that it brings, mighty God. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as you have given comfort in the past and you give comfort in your word to continue unto the end. Father, I pray that the family and the friends of Jehovah Clark, God, hallelujah, will give confidence moment, God, to understand that this is the way that we must go. Father, I pray that you will bless them to understand, hallelujah. And if anything that they believe that as he have accepted Christ, and that he's going somewhere, hallelujah, where we all need to be, Father, I pray that you will bless us, bless them all, that they will understand, God, and they will walk in this path, God, even this time before too late. God, bless them, mighty God, in a special way. And Father, as we continue to this evening, God, I pray for your continuous comfort. God, just bless us as we go in this moment, God, as we are going to the great sight, mighty God, I pray that you will us bless tremendously as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to ask the Paul Bearers to come forward. And I can count on you for an orderly exit. But the way we'd like to do it is the minister will be in the front leading followed by the Paul Deers, and then the immediate family behind the casket, 
and the, the rest of us follow their wrath. Brother Gary, whilst the procession is going on, we're going to sing the recession hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
Hold on. Which car? This one? Uh, hold on. The Honda is going in. Come on, friend. Make sure you pass. Go, bro. Um, you can make sure you pass.
Morning. And I heard a great voice out of the throne say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and that shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. The first things are passed away. And he that sitteth on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. And he said unto me, They are come to pass. I am Alpha and the Omega, the Lord, for as such as he know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For as much as it has pleased our Heavenly Father, it is wife providence to take unto himself our beloved Trevor Clark. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who shall change the body of our humiliation and fashion it anew in the likeness of his own body of glory according to the working of his mighty power wherewith he is able even to subdue all things unto himself we are going to turn to the first hymn graveside hymn and ladies and gentlemen i need to apologize for Minister Denville James and Brother John James, who would always be at funeral with us, but it was not possible for them to do that today. That's why you have not seen them. We are going to do the hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold? And we're going to ask you to help us to sing along. Will your anchor hold in the storm of life? When the clouds unfold, their ways are workmen, please begin.
when you know that you belong to him. Glory to God. We are going to be doing some choruses at this time. We ask that you join us in singing choruses. My world, I no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasure.
I read to us the acknowledgement. The family of the late Trevor Ballhead Clark wishes to express sincere thanks for your prayers, telephone calls, visit cards, and kind words. So thoughtfully expressed. May God continue to bless you all. We now repeat the benediction. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us always. Now until you come, Lord. Amen. God bless you all.
Yeah. Dear wife at home, I know you wanted to be here, but you couldn't be, unfortunately. I know you're watching it here. Um, never. Never. Thank you for watching. Lanet, Rodney, Amanda, Donna, Laura, Pelia, family and friends. Um, thanks for spending the time and watching the send off for daddy. You know, we really appreciate it. And this was the best way that we could actually bring it to you. You take your you take your Thank you.